I'm honestly ready to go home. I like my bed, I like my home, my family. <laughs> Every day from Bakersfield to Budapest, millions of people gather to see their favorite bands. During the summer of 2002, over half a million people came out to see one of the best tours ever assembled. Blink-182, Green Day, Jimmy Eat World, Cut You Up. See, that's the problem. No one knew who the hell we were. Nobody. Not crew, not the bands, and certainly not the fans. So why in the fuck were we even on this monster tour? Well, our longtime friends from Blink-182, Mark Hoppus and Tom DeLong, invited us out on the tour, either to give us our big break or as some sort of weird social experiment. Either way, one day I'm in my cubicle, and the next thing you know, we're on the road. I can't believe this is fucking happening! We took Cut You Up on the road because they're really good friends of ours, and uh, they're a good band, and they're really charismatic people, and we knew that they would keep tour interesting, and they would keep tour fresh. When we thought about who would be a funny, not even just a funny, a cool band to watch how that happened to, we, we thought of Cut You Up immediately. I'd say since the first day I even heard of Cut You Up going on the tour, I had second thoughts of like, if we could even get to the first day of the tour. I didn't even think we'd make it through the whole tour. I'm like, there's no way we're gonna make it through nine weeks of shows. I guess it's four guys to fucking, uh, that play in front of like their friends, and now we're on this huge tour. I didn't know anyone had confidence in me or anyone else that we could pull that off. Oh, it's real funny. That was what was cool. You could play 50 live shows or somewhere around there. Some bands play for like 10 years and never play 50 shows. But they have the courage and the energy to go out and really drink and smoke and uh, break their way across the world. I mean, the first night when we left, it was like, oh, what's gonna happen? It was like the four of us in this little pod of, you know, no one could touch us. This is where people stop being real and start being, wait. Stop being polite. That's what I'm talking about. Now they're being real. Five in the morning. We're stopped in beautiful Bakersfield, California. Buenos dias. How are you doing? We will have rehearsal tomorrow morning. Uh, I love the drive. It's fun. Nobody else does. But uh, we'll see you in the morning. Get up, fucker. You need some Chris's underwear? First day. Yeah. Wake up the next morning at like 12 or whatever, just kind of tripping out like, what are we doing here? This is, this is wrong. I can't believe they're gonna let us 
do this and go on this tour. On top of that, fuck around. Nobody knows what anything is going to be like. When I, we first pulled in Bakersfield, we saw the van. I went, oh fuck, these guys are really going to be stuck in this van for the next eight fucking weeks. The van's already ruined. <laughs> what you guys do? Hey, move this monstrosity. <laughs> All right, sorry. And it was hot as shit, and the van already stunk like shit and beer and pot and body odor and farts. It's like, dude, you guys have been, we're three hours out of fucking San Diego. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? The real thought I had when I saw them pull up in Bakersfield <laughs> was, I wonder how long they're gonna be able to be on this tour before they get kicked off. Shit, I can't believe we actually pulled this off because the whole tour wasn't really just our tour. We were sharing it with Green Day, and the only thing they knew of those guys was me telling them it was a bunch of guys that do acid and drink a lot. No, I don't think. What the hell? But I found out later they don't do acid, but they do drink a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of walking and knowing that you're gonna like play somewhere in the vicinity of the show. We're just like, what? And right when we're in line, here comes Furman walking in like this. His eyes like this. And Furman just blinks, tour manager. You're not to look at the other bands, you're not to overstep your lines. You gotta realize you're backstage. You need to just like keep your cool, know what's going on. Going in there, they're already on our asses, like, don't do this, don't do that. And we just knew that we had to do this and that. So we show up on the first day in Bakersfield and uh, we thought we were the opening band, you know, we're the first one on the bill. But we come to the show and there's a, another band like outside. First time I met the Cut You Up guys was I think the first show. And I saw them in the parking lot in the van. Just ended up talking to them and hanging out in the van. Everyone's a, a, is a definite character. For better or for worse, they, they're definitely something. Oh, yeah. saw where we were going to play, we were like, awesome. It was outdoors, it was a little stage, you know, it was like right in the middle of everything and we were just, you know, we were stoked. We started playing and a lot of the kids were going, well, why is, why is there a band playing out in front of the show? What's going on? Well, talk amongst yourselves. They didn't know what was happening. Okay, there's a band playing out here. Cool. When can I get in? Hey, Brandon! Oh, you got rules. They're so good. Fuck me. Oh, fuck. Fire! Oh, shit. Fire! <laughs> Walking the first rehearsal, it's pitch black and the whole place is empty and like drums spinning around. And it's like, there's so much stuff going on. It's like, this is a rock and roll experience. If I was a kid, you know, just a whatever, a, a straight up fan, and I bought a ticket and I went to the show, I would just be standing in front going like, this is what I came for. We were like, come on the bottom of the shoe. We were nothing. We'd come into this tour like the outcast, like the, the Tom weird experiment thing. It was great to have it, just meet a person, anyone that you never had met ever, and they come in and go, you were good. We're like the um, kid in the middle that gets pushed around. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, my pick's dirty. Hey, where's Blaine? You can't Chris. shut the door because I'm too Brandon. hungover. <laughs> Uh, I don't like when your legs rub against mine. In our boxers. <laughs> boxers, boxers. 
What's gonna happen next? <laughs> I'd say the first day was cool because we got to meet you know, a lot of the people that were gonna be on the tour. That reminds me of when I met Billy Joe. Nice guy. Obviously, we were not supposed to talk to Green Day whatsoever. I was the one that met Billy Joe. <laughs> Who did you meet, Brendan? Just Mike Dern. Mike Dern. Yeah. Who'd you meet? No, Billy Joe, the singer for Green Day. Yeah. Yeah. That's who I met. We played the show, and then Chris comes up and goes, "Hey, how you doing? I'm not on acid, but I, my name is Chris, and I'm gonna cut you up." And that was a really fun vlog. And, and I'm drunk. And I said, I was like, my name is Billy. <laughs> How you doing? I'm drunk too. And I met him. And nobody else met him because he, I don't think he really wanted to talk to anyone else. Who are you friends with? Who do you know? From Green Day. <laughs> I'm sure you guys might meet him down the line. Maybe I'll introduce you to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. Because <laughs> Billy's fucking cool. Uh, we talked about skateboarding, he even took down my cell phone. <laughs> Crystal, I want a cigarette and kill myself when I could just chill in the love van and yeah. soak up a bunch of Percy Irie juice and saturate smoking, my head with love. This is Arizona. Phoenix was strange because we got past our first show and that was our little rite of passage. Not really, but to us. We got to play directly in front of this huge arena on this cool stage. And we start playing, we play a couple songs. The PA head, the thing that you plug the microphones in, it's like someone's all, hey, something's smoking behind you. <laughs> it's right in the middle of a song, I like smell something, and we turn around, there's smoke coming out of our PA. The PA's on fire. <laughs> there's like a minor scale version of Blink. <laughs> Phoenix was a definite disaster of the show. We just stopped playing, just started drinking. Yeah, this is where we usually hang out, right in front of the fan room, in case the guys come out, need a blowjob, hand job, whatever you want. What do you want? Here's Tom, he wants to talk to you. It's my mom. Hello? You have a fine young man here. We just paid him $30 to eat an actual uh, dog mess. No, but honestly, for $30, you're something to talk <laughs> Oh my god! Hey, you guys mind? We're trying to meditate next door, man. Here comes the people that we're not supposed to like talk to. They come through with this bottle of Patron, like, let's all do a shot. And Durant pours me a shot. So small, I can still see this just going to the bottom of it. He's like, basically like he had this bottle of Patron, and he's going to pour shots for the rest of his life. That's how small it was. The pop oh. responsibility to him. Oh, yeah. pop responsibility. <laughs> oh, you know Mike there? Yeah. Oh, that, no, that's cool. Totally. Mike's a bro. Like, yeah. But <laughs> I know Billy Joe.
dehydrated My tongue is swelling up One, two, three, yeah. No, I was I was one of the only only whores on the tour, like man whores that could actually just sow his oats. God damn, I want to be a slut. I was just a whore, like man whore. And then he started swapping spit with this girl. I was like, oh, herpes. I was saying herpes all the way. It was dark in there. I couldn't see the crusty things on the side of the lip. One, two, three, go! Holy shit, man. People are superficial. <laughs> they like us because we're on the side of the stage when actually we don't know anything. I, I didn't have anybody to answer to, so I got around. <laughs> Best concert. Ever, yeah. ever. Best concert, yo. Yeah. Hey, Cut You Up was good, but I don't think it's the best concert ever. Cut You Up fucking rules. Do it again. There you go. Shut that door. Well, I'm throwing up. <laughs> I didn't want to walk into the guitar center with bad breath, so I just puke out all the bad breath. <coughs> oh, so we went and bought a PA, <laughs> and I was like, let me handle it. We need this and this and this. What can price can you give us? Well, 900. Well, you got it. Irvine was the first time we actually rolled up and they go, here's a side stage, you're playing there. And we're like, ooh, Irvine Meadows. It's like playing a show at the Wild Animal Park, but with no animals. We felt like rock stars, because we had a stage. Day off in Vegas. What more can you ask for, really? He said at Bellagio, all of the Cut You Up boys said, hey, you guys want to come over to a nice pool and have a drink or two? We're walking in just skinny, pale, pasty, horrible. Ugh. <laughs> There's nothing funnier than all these families that come to the Bellagio to stay at the nicer hotel in Vegas, and all these guys walk by are, like, tattoos and probably with their cock and balls hanging out of their swim trunks. Cannonball. I mean, to me, to, like, jump in the pool and look up and just see, like, the Bellagio with the gold and everything. And I think back to like being in my cubicle on my computer, and then I'm here in the Bellagio pool. Atticus is completely turning Chris into a different guy. He used to be such an angel. And then all of a sudden, next thing I know, I have a mustache drawn on my face, <laughs> and we're in some wedding chapel, Aww. watching Tom and his wife get remarried. <laughs> oh, fuck, the wedding. I got remarried in Vegas with all of my French friends. This is going to be the worst wedding ever. Dude, you look awesome. You went, hey, what's up? Everybody want to go to a wedding? Let's go. What's going on right now? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> Wait, give him an autograph. <laughs> but the French are there at my wedding. <laughs> 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 Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Please stand in honor of the bride. <laughs> also, that you be supportive of each other's endeavors, because trials and tribulations are inevitable in life as well as marriage. You must support each other on a daily basis. And I do remind you that the marriage vows are not a pledge, but in the state of Nevada, I re-pronounce you to be your husband. <laughs> All they needed was like Elvis there with one of those painted mustaches speaking in French. That was the most beautiful oh. thing I've seen in so long. That makes me happy for my friends. That's ceremony. Look at your friends. Like, oh, one of the fucking face. Wait, so like, why would I punch you in the face? I'm saying corny lines. Of course, corny lines. Just chicks are here, dude. All friends fight, no matter what. Especially if you're in a band. Well, like Mikey, he's a fucking hippie. He's, he's what it is. How do you start on Brandon? He's a fucking nightmare, man. Every single time, like, dude, last time I had the chick. I feel like I'm like acting jealous. No, last time I had the chick. Last time I had to make out with the hot chick all day. I mean, honestly, I watched the footage. I was there, and I still don't know what they were talking about. And last time I helped the chick, don't deny the facts. You got in the van, you got a space for, him, for oh, her and him, oh, both of you, and she helped. Yeah, the second time, this corny shit, this that. Once Jerry died, Garcia, Micah went pfft, off the wall. I, feel, I was like, oh, you're gonna get pissed. Fly away, everybody. No, I'll fly away with your fucking fist. How, do you, how are you friends with somebody but you fight so much? I don't get it. Brandon, I don't no fucking punch me, me, man. I don't want to punch you. I fucking hit piss. me right here. I fucking hit me. Just like my list to your lines. I don't say anything. You can do it because I can do it. Do it. Hey, let's punch each other. I'll fucking kill I remember like leaving Las Vegas going, how are we going to get gas money to the next show? Because all the cash we got for this whole week is gone. Of course we anticipated the argument brawling between the band. If you take four guys, stick them in a van with no personal space, what do you think's gonna happen? The problem was we were fighting five days into a two month tour. I heard that you can scream and yell, it's the perfect atmosphere. And I hope you truly come. With all the good go wrong, my free. And I think there's more to come I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this note on top of my shit in front of their door so they have to do something with it. Housekeeping. <laughs> Bye. Fucking chick right across the way. People don't really like us in the mornings because everyone's working hard and we're just kind of fucking around all morning. Lots of people working. If I had to say anything for the crew, I think the crew is kind of pissed, you know, because they uh, they have to put up with all these stupid things that Mark and I want to do. Where's some band called Cut You Up is going to be here? We had no idea who these guys were. Worried about a bunch of punk kids running around, you know, wrecking havoc, and uh, it's pretty much right. And they're drunken buffoons, but. That's the beauty of it. They don't care. They're the real deal. There's no bullshit with them. That's who they are. They drink all day and then they go on and play some trippy acid rock thing and drink more. That's why I decided to change their name to Cut You Off, because I thought they'd had enough. I think if the, the whole crew saw Cut You Off the first couple of days and probably thought that, you know, if these guys last the first month, they'll be dead or in jail. 
I'm like lounging on the stage as people are moving like heavy boxes, you know, yelling at each other. This is crazy. Honestly, there's boxes flying around. People are putting shit in boxes. I saw the singer directing traffic during a loadout. Hey, get that up there. Make a hole. Get it on there. Get that pipe. You're not even a fucking rock star. And you're sitting on our stage. Like, I'm, can you move so I can put this amp up? first few days, it's kind of like you still stay in your own world and you don't really branch out that much. But then, you know, you start meeting new characters and like people who build the stage and stuff. There's a guy, Rigger Dan, who would, he's a total character. You must listen to Rigger Dan if you want to know what to do when the time comes. When your band makes it hey, let's have a wet and you contest. don't know what to do, you must listen to Dan, Excuse Rigger Dan. Me? No. Maybe. What? That's exactly what I'm saying. Are you in? I mean, are you in? Are you they, in? Even that they, the, they hesitated. This is fucking upsetting, man. You guys should look at this and learn from this. What hey. not to do. Is this is a fucking high school helmet party in here, man. <laughs> I thought that guy was great. Like, what the fuck? Why is your finger missing? Mothers lock up your daughters. Roadies have crazy personalities, and he's like, best example of it. He's fucked. Backstage at the shows is always as, as fun as hell. I mean, everyone is bored because they're waiting for their turn to start, but everyone's looking for something fun to do. And there's like not much to do except throw apples at walls or steal golf carts, get really drunk, things of that nature, pretty much. San Diego, Jose Cuervo. Dude, this shit's gnarly, dude, but I'll do it. I'll do it, fucking, I don't care. Go, go, go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is this shit? There's alcohol. I can get a fucking dick in. I'll give you 100 bucks if you do a kickflip with no shoes. The 200 bucks. 200 dollars. He's a little bitch, dude. Oh my god! Shenanigans once again. San Antonio 2K2, bitch! And we <laughs> I'm 
some reason we just sat there and didn't think it was gay to like hold each other slowly, softly in the hot tub. And there's all these other guests from the hotel looking at these guys going, there's fucking eight guys in a hot tub over there, what's wrong with them? I had started to kind of like take the role of like tour manager and so I had called this uh, video game place, talked to the manager and set it all up, all free games, free go-karts. I just don't even know if anyone can really handle the course. It's kind of a tougher course here in Dallas. It's humid, so that means the tracks are slippery, the tires can't grip as well. It's, a, it's also a big race, there's a lot of people involved, so there's gonna be a lot of bumping and touching, what we like to call uh, ride-up-alongs, and, uh, and it's gonna be kind of an interesting race here today. I think I'm gonna kick everyone's ass and I'm gonna fuck my, I'm gonna fuck me a pig. We had the run of the place. We were just going on every go car, all these bungee rides, everything. And I remember we went on the, the slingshot, whoopity doo. Oh, yeah. Scary, we shouldn't have done that. But that's just how I am. I just live a life of courage. I care, I live on the edge. That's what I do. Sometimes I write fucking amazing songs that make people shit their pants too. But I also live a life of courage. Well, that's what I remember most about Cut You Up is that they never seem dry or clean at all, no matter what. They're always wet, but they're always kind of dirty at the same time. It's like they always halfway took a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you guys can make yourself laugh. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, oh, oh. No <laughs> Fuck off! Grab him. Ow! We're staying in this hotel that's a mall, too. So from our window, we just look down on this huge mall, and we're just like, whoa, well, let's just go hang out there all day. I'm setting him free. Get it. <laughs> the little butter was go. locked up for so long. He's done. He's free. He's, He's going free. out. In the mall. Is he going to make it to the ocean? Yes. Where are we? Texas. No, we aren't. We're in Alabama. Alabama. I remember we were, we were in, the, in a mall, and there was a guy sleeping on a couch inside the mall, and they went inside of a pet store and bought, like, a hundred crickets, I think, and dumped them on some guy. <laughs> what you guys put on it? They put a cricket on it. His own picture. Just like, stuff like that that would just make my day. <laughs> we had met this guy who was a waiter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, we're going to a gay bar. I'm going to, I'm going to dress up tonight. And we're like, what's that mean? He's like, oh, I, I, I dress, you know, I dress like a woman sometimes. And we're like. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's on. Hi, what's Good up? Evening. I'm Cassidy. Where are we and what are we about to do? Oh, go? we're in Hoover, Alabama, and we're fixing to go to Birmingham, actually, to go to the Quest, to party all fucking night. I'm engaged, and I took a vow that I wasn't gonna, you know, meet any girls, but I did meet one. My palms are sweating. I'm nervous with George. Well, honey, you don't have to be nervous with me. I'm just like your newfound friend. I know. You're a, cute, you're a little cutie, aren't you? Oh, uh, honey, you keep drinking, honey. I get better. <laughs> Let me put that right there on your little booty. Oh, stick me, baby. And I fell in love that night. She's got nice boobies. Uh-huh. Alabama, the quest, cool bar. That was funny. That was very interesting. That was my first uh, experience at a quote unquote alternative bar. But you know what? There was no attitudes in there. There was no that fucking super dominant male shit that you find at a normal club, you know? It's like everyone's just having a good time. And I'm back in that. What's up? We're in the van. Crew's not a Columbus. We got a good show coming up. Uh, we're going to Detroit. Rock City, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Rock City. Obviously, if you're traveling across country, every once in a while, you're gonna maybe accidentally touch somebody's dick. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> like a couple times. God, we gotta get out of here. Like a couple times. God, we gotta get out of here. Like a couple times. Dude, I hope there's not a gay theme through the whole tour. 100% gay, because you want to know why? There was no chicks in our van on the way to the place we were going. God damn it. This is a game I invented. It's called Gay Chicken. And it goes like this. OK, you put your hands right here. And I put mine right here. And we go, so we go whoever gets farthest towards the crotch before the other person has to stop. <laughs> 
is going to get jumped in to cut you up. The band. Tonight. I went through it. He's got to go through it. Right. Lay down? Yeah, yeah. Lay, down. lay down. Lay down. Oh, God. You be in the fucking yeah, band? All right. All right. I'm, gonna get, I'm getting right. jumped I'll in to cut you up. up. Take two off. <laughs> oh, Brandon, you got to kiss him. the women, now. Are, are you ready to be in cut you up? Are you ready? Are you, ready? Are you, are you sure? Are you yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, you ready? I'll do the napalm right on. Let us put the boy. This one. Ay, Dios mio. No more, Brandon. Okay. It's okay. It's all over. It's all over. It's all over. Oh, it's man, okay. dude. No, I don't want coke. No, 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 I want water. We already. <laughs> Shut up, Chris. Touring is really hard, especially when you're in a van and you're stuck with the same dudes for eight weeks. Get the fuck out of here, dude. And you can't afford hotel rooms necessarily, and you sleep in the van a lot, and you're just driving through the heat and disgust, and it's the same thing every day, and you miss your house and you miss your bed. After a while, it's like it starts to grate on you a little bit. As much fun as you're having. Like, fuck, can I really ride for another 12 hours with the same four dudes in this van? halfway point of the tour in Florida felt amazing. Nobody's been arrested, and our shows are getting way better. We're actually becoming a real band. Not just a bunch of guys playing together, but an actual band. The crew has even stopped betting on whether we'd quit or get kicked off the tour. I think some of them are even starting to root for us. fucking Did you hear the lightning? brought their passport in the baba fucking oh, it's like a porno bag you 
sleep with a dumbass today. Shithead, come with me. Watch your face. <laughs> you don't sure. tell me what to do. You're gonna be eating dog shit tonight. You better start crying or do something. Make, make me happy. <laughs>